Hello everyone, I am Shivani Goel, welcome in WS Cube Time. So today I am going to start with a new module which is based on SU. So this module will give you an idea on different aspects to learn SU. So let us start with the module. Let us start with a brief definition on search engine optimization. So what is search engine optimization? It is, it refers to the technique that help your website rank higher in organic or natural search results. So what happens here? Let's suppose here, this is your website and now you want your website is ranked on the first page of your Google search engine result page organically. For this, you have to do search engine optimization here. Okay, so search engine optimization help you to make your website more visible to the people who are looking for your product or services via search engine. When user simply mention their query on search engine which is related to your product and services. So search engine help your website visible to those people on the search engine. To ne you need to keep track of and understand some emerging trends like what are the emerging trends here what are the new features in your search related product and the tool tool that is your search console so you have to understand that you have to understand your audience that is how they behave what they want okay after getting knowledge about all these now you can do very good in your search engine optimization here okay so search engine optimization is basically about understanding what people are searching for online we are doing keyword research in search engine optimization and with the help of this keyword research here we understand like what people are searching for online the word they are using the type of content they wish to consume okay after knowing the answer of these question will allow you to connect to the people who are searching online for the solution you offer and then we use this particular keyword which we figure out with the help of keyword research we use these keyword in our website and we will try to rank our website on google search engine result page okay so next is why it is important for your business website to be listed on search engine like as we have so many websites on the search engine so why it's compulsory for your business what are the main benefits your business is getting when they rank on search engine so on google alone there are over 694000 searches conducted every second okay so in every second your website is not indexed on the google okay so in that case you are potentially missed out of hundred if not thousands of opportunities for someone to visit your website read your content and potentially buy your product and services okay so practicing seo basics as well as more advanced technique often those can drastically improve your website's ability to rank in the search engine and get found by your potential customers okay seo is the most viable and cost effective way to both understand and reach customers in key moment that matter okay because in case of seo we want to rank our website organically okay so for seo the advertisement cost you don't need to spend the cost which you spend on the seo is very less as comparison to your advertisement campaigns okay so seo increasing organic visibility and high quality website traffic okay in case of seo here we do efforts in the way that our website is ranked on google search engine result page for this it can improve your organic visibility leading to increase website traffic and is a monumental benefit of seo okay so search engine optimization is hyper targeted and your customer centric because in case of search engine optimization our every research is conducted on the basis of your customers information your customers query whatever be the information they want to get whatever be the word they are using to search their particular information 
okay and an effective seo strategy will help deliver your web pages to a relevant audiences via pertinent search query okay next is seo offers impressive roi what it means see search engine visibility directly correlate to boosted web traffic and increased revenue making your return on investment one of the most significant seo benefit for many companies okay that is also the one of the reason that we are doing seo seo improves credibility and trust see what happened here when user put any query on google let's suppose google is our most populated search engine and let's suppose if user put some query or some keyword on google in that case they rely that google will provide a good quality and relevant result to their user and that's why they rely on their result so they click on the first or second result which are provided by google okay because they trust on the google that the content which google provide them at the higher ranking that must having good quality and that must be relevant to your query okay so trust is developed by search engine authority and a high quality product or services that build credibility among visitors seo provide 24 by 7 support in that case here in case of your paid ads campaign what happened here in case of paid ads campaign you have one budget here okay and your ad will showcase only till this particular budget will exist okay but once your budget is going to end in that case your ad is also not visible there in that case in case of seo once you are doing effort and once after putting some efforts if your website is ranked organically on google in that case it is there 24 by 7 okay your effort do not stop after your work hour so seo is a unique because it allows your company to reach users while they are searching for you okay seo targets the entire market funnel why i am saying this because in case of seo the main pillar is content marketing whatever be the content you deliver to your audiences their quality their relevancy that is really important in seo point of view okay so content marketing driven by seo that includes a variety of content type targeting every stage of the marketing funnel we have different stage in our marketing funnel first one is our awareness stage next is our interest then we have consideration then we have conversion and then we have retention okay so what happen here in case of seo we can create content to aware our audience to generate interest in your product and services okay we can create our product and services content in this way that they can consider our particular product and services and they purchase that they can make conversion now okay and we again target that type of content so that our users will available on my website for a long time they spend lot of time and they do more and more purchasing from our website okay as you reach your entire target audience what does mean entire target audience okay it means that in one case you can target multiple audiences For example, let's suppose we have one company. They provide RO, RO as a product, and RO as a service. Okay, let's suppose. So in that case, we have two type of audiences there. One who want only product, second who want only services, and third who want product and services both. So we have three type of audiences here. In that case, what we can do with the help of SEO. SEO is equally effective for companies targeting various audiences perhaps with the same services okay so SEO optimize your user experience user experience really matters a lot in case of your search engine optimization because let's suppose if someone visit on your website they just look at the content and if they are not found your quality and the relevant con- content on your website 
in that case they immediately get back to your website okay in that case your bounce rate is increasing here bounce rate means when someone visited on your website and do nothing do no click on your website that is known as bounce in that case if you have how high bounce rate here in that case it will tell google that the web page is not valuable for the user and often resulting in lower ranking okay so a google user expects to have his or her query answer in a moment in this module we are going to discuss about what is search engine what is crawling what is indexing what is your crawl budget and how to optimize your crawl budget okay so let's start with a brief definition on search engine what search engine is so a search engine is a software program that helps people find the information they are looking for online using keyword or the phrases okay example of the search engines are just like your google bing yahoo you can use these search engine to figure out any particular information you want to get okay so these search engines can store information about trillions of web pages in an organized format okay so basically that is the search engine and now we have to know how the search engine work when you search any particular query then what are the backend activities happening on the search engine because just by knowing that here we can work on this way now we have three component of search engine first one is your query engine which proceed your query to your crawler which proceed your query to your search engine database just to figure out that information next is your crawler which can read every single information from your website and next one is indexer which can index your website okay next is your crawling what is this crawling here crawling basically means crawling is reading content on the web pages and storing that information in a database so what happened here so let's just suppose this is your website okay and on your website you can add multiple information there information in the form of text in the form of images in the form of video okay so whatever with the information you added in your website here we have one web crawler or you can also say web spider okay so your web crawler or web spider visit on your website or any particular seed url you mention there any particular url queue in your web web page okay they can visit there and crawl every single information fetched with the help of internet here and then extract that information and save this information in your database okay so this is the use of crawling here in case of crawling let's suppose if any web link is available in your web page okay so how your google crawler is going to work they first visit your website read your content again they found one link here then they again visit on that particular link page and also read all the information available here so this is the functioning of crawler here now the web crawler explores the web page based on some policies what are these policies let's figure out first of all we have one selection policy according to the selection policy crawler decide which page it should download and which it should not next we have revisit policy revisit policy means that crawler schedule the time when it should reopen the web page and added the changes in its database okay let's suppose if this is your website web crawler visit to your website and read every single information okay and after some days if you do any change in your web page in that case here google crawler again visit to your website and again crawl all the recommended added changes which you done in your website and store that changes in their database okay next we have parallelization policy in case of parallelization policy crawlers use multiple processes at once to explore the links known as distributed crawling here so what happened in that case here 
let's suppose this is your website a okay and your website a link is mentioned in website b this is the link of website a here and again your website link is mentioned in the website c here that is the link of website a okay so what happened here when google crawler read your website they can read every single content available in your website here and again when web crawler read information of the b then they can also find your website link and then they again visit to your website with the help of this particular link and again read all the information available in this particular web page okay and the same activity they do with the help of c when they read information from website c then they can also get your link from here and they can also visit your website with the help of this particular link okay so by this way they can read your website content with the help of multiple sources here so this is known as multiple process and distributed crawling okay next we have politeness policy in case of politeness what what happen here we have a term known as crawl delay okay so what is this crawl delay means when google crawler download any information from your web page then they just take a pause of some millisecond and that millisecond pause is known as crawl delay here okay that is implemented in which the crawler has to wait for a few seconds after it download some data from the web server okay so these are the policies we have in your in case of crawling next we have how the scrolling work see we have a search engine here let's suppose google is your search engine when someone put any query here any query in the search engine okay then what happened here your web spider or your web crawler visit to your website read every single web page crawl your website copy the information in your website and store that information in the data okay and when user put any information there then that information is figure out from this database and display the result from this database to the user so this is how your crawler work okay after crawling next we have indexing okay as google crawler or your search engine crawler crawl every information from your website that after crawling your information now the next step is to do indexing what indexing means indexing is just like you can do indexing of your book okay let's suppose if you want to figure out any particular topic from this book okay now what approach you can do first you will start from your search page and start continue reading all the topics here or you can simply look at your index figure out that particular topic corresponding to this figure out your page simply visit that page number and find your information okay so this is the easiest step here like simply look at your index and visit to that particular page the same thing happens in the google in your search engine in your search engine database we have lot of information there okay so just to fetch your user's query from that particular database it is really difficult so that's why here search engine do index indexing on the basis of keywords here okay when someone search for any particular query then corresponding to their query we can check their relevant keyword and then that particular query or information will reflect to your user okay so after the baby search engine crawl all over the internet it creates a index of all the web pages it finds in its way okay we have so many factors which contribute to create an efficient indexing system for a search engine first we have storage information used by the indexer okay next we have your indexer size what is the size of your indexer third is the ability to quickly find the document containing the searched keyword here okay so these are the factors which are responsible for the efficiency and reliability of an index okay this is how your indexing happens here we have a user user do any search query and search query is passed with the help of your query engine okay and here we have some html pages or you can say your web pages 
web pages are the pages of your website okay then your indexer will get keywords from your web pages your keywords from web pages okay after fetching your keyword they store these keyword in the form of indexing to their index file or repository okay what happened here let's suppose if your website working on same keyword another website that's also working on the same keyword in that case our indexer provide them ranking like this particular keyword will rank first this particular keyword will rank second on the basis of that they add these keyword in their repository and when user put any query then your query engine look at in the index in the index file and get list of the match pages here and show result page to your users okay whatever be the relevant result page relevant information your user want to get that information will be visible to your users here okay next we have two type of indexing one is your forward index and next one is your backward index so what is this say in case of forward index in these type of indexes all the keywords present in a document are stored okay what happened here these are the keywords let us suppose we have document 1 and in our document 1 we have these keywords like the cow sees moo so let us suppose these are the keyword here okay again for document 2 these are the keywords we have again for document 3 we have these keywords so this is the one form of indexing next we have reverse index what is this reverse index in that case the forward indexers are stored and converted to reverse index in which each document containing a specific keyword and is put together with other document containing that keyword what happened here here in case of forward we have primary segment is our document like we can check our particular keyword in document here next we have in case of reverse index we have keyword here and we can figure out the document corresponding to that keyword here let's suppose here we have a keyword the so corresponding to that keyword we have these document here okay so this is known as reverse index okay we are done with our indexing part now so the question is how search engine work so how it's working here we have user when user put any query then with the help of ranking algorithm that query will fetch from the database and your web spider crawl every single information from the web page and then do indexing and after doing indexing they store it in the database okay and that fetch data up in your index file and then that will send to your user So this is how your search engine work. Next is crawl budget. So what is this crawl budget here? The number of time a search engine spider crawl your website in a given allotted time is what we call your crawl budget. Okay? Let's suppose this is your website, Google crawler visit your website first time and crawl every single information. Okay? when you are doing some changes in your website again web crawler visit to your website crawl every single information in that case here you can see that your crawl budget is 2 because two time your web spider will visit on your website okay so which is known as crawl budget now we have to optimize your crawl budget so that our website will rank on our search engine first page okay for this we have to opt some strategies here so what are these strategies in this you have to avoid using your rich media files that is your flash rich media in that case you have to build your internal links and the external links what is internal linking here here you can see that let's suppose this is your home page then we have your category page inside your home page and all these pages are interconnected to each other okay let's suppose if your google crawler will read information from this particular page then they can also figure out the link of these pages and they can again visit these pages and read every single information available on these pages so this is this is how your internal linking help your search engine 
spider to read all the information from your website. So internal link inform Google to other relevant pages on your website and even the keywords for which you would like them to rank. So internal linking helps point boards to key pages much faster. That's why we have to do internal linking to optimize our crawl budget. Next we have external link. In case of external link, these link help search engine understand the context of the pages as well as providing a good user experience. In that case, what happened here? Let's suppose this is your website and in your website, let's suppose we have a link which redirect your website to external link. Okay, in that case, you can tell your Google spider about this particular website. They can again visit that website and read all the single information available on that website here. Okay, next we have to make use of our social channel. That will also help you to rank your website faster on your search engine result page. On-page SEO, which is also known as on-site SEO. It is an art and the science of optimizing the content on your page. Both the written words and HTML source code just to make it as discoverable as possible. So what is this on-page SEO here? In your on-page SEO, let's suppose this is your website. So we will work on on-site like on this particular website page. Like in case of your title, your meta description, your linking part your images, your videos. So we will work on all these parameters which is available on your own site of your website. Okay, so let's start with on-page SEO. We have some factors which we are considered in our on-page SEO activities. First of all, we have a content, then we have HTML and then we have architecture. architecture okay. So let's start learning one by one what are these and what are the things we are going to cover in this particular session. See, let's start with one which is your content here. In case of content, we have content cluster, then we have page quality, then we have freshness and then we have verticals. So let's start with the first that is your content cluster here. What is this content cluster? Content clusters means that here you have a central idea that is your hub and then you have a pages your spotting pages that is known as your spoke page attached with your hub and this particular model is known as hubbing spoke model okay here we need to create a central page that act as a hub for the content cluster and several spoke pages that are related to the central hub page let me show you one example here of this hub spoke model here you can see that we have a central idea that is your weight loss okay and corresponding to this central idea we have so many spoke pages available here that is the secret of weight loss in a good dietitian eight foods that will help you lose weight why you need to eat often to lose weight the six best weight loss youtube videos the 14 best resources for weight loss, yoga exercises for weight loss, the ultimate cheat sheet to lose weight, 200 myths about weight loss. So these all are the spark pages which is related to weight loss here, which is your hub here. Okay. Next we have page quality ranking. These are the factors which are considered by your search engine just to rank your website high on Google search engine result page. Next, we have a page quality ranking. In, page, in case of your page quality ranking, these are the guidelines which are created by Google for your search quality evaluator to rate pages in search engine result page. Okay, so as we can see, these are the ratings here. If I'm talking about your fully meets rating, so as its name shows that a special rating category, which only applies to certain query and results, all or almost all the mobile users would be immediately and fully satisfied by the result and would not need to view any other result to satisfy their need. Next, we have highly meet category. It is also very helpful for many or most mobile users. Some users may wish to see additional result because this is your highly meet, not fully meet category. 
Next we have moder moderately meat category. In this, this is helpful for many users or very helpful for some mobile users. Some or many users may wish to see any additional result just to fulfill your need to view other results here. Next we have a slightly meat here. In case of slightly meat, it's helpful for fewer mobile users. There is a connection between the query and the result but not a strong and satisfying connection here. Many or most user would wish to see additional result. And last one is your fails to meet. So as its name shows, completely fail. Completely fails to meet the need of the mobile users. All the user would wish to see additional result here. So these are the rating which are decided by Google here. Next we have YMYL pages. YMYL means your money, your life. These are the pages which have stick page quality ratings. If any of your web page on your site that allows user to make a purchase, transfer money, pay bill or submit payment information falls under shopping or financial transaction page category. Okay. And if your web page offers advices or services that help a user navigate their finances, it will fall under your financial information or advice page category of YMYL. Examples like if your website include that help navigate taxes, investments, retirement planning, funding for college or other major financial decision. So they are covered to financial information or advice pages category. If your website, website that go well beyond standard medical conditions and pharmaceuticals to offer advice or information about journal health, drugs, specific diseases or condition, your mental health, nutrition and more. So they will come under your medical information or advice pages category. Okay. If any website offering your legal information or advice falls under your legal information pages, which include any information regarding divorce, child custody, personal injury, creating a will, etc. Okay. So these have stick page quality ranking. Okay. Next, we have one model here that is your EAT criteria for your high page quality ranking. First one is E. E stand for your expertise. Expertise means formal expertise that is doctor as author of medical content. Let's suppose you are writing any blog content which is related to medical. And in your author box, if you mention that you are doctor, so your audience consider that you are the person who are expert in this particular field. So they can trust your website. So this can improve your page quality. Okay. So your author profile in the bio help a lot in this type of page quality ratings here. Next we have authoritativeness. In case of authoritativeness, it means if you add your about a section, contact a session in your website, your testimonials, your awards and recognition, in that case, your users can more rely on your website. So this can also improve your page quality. Next one is T, which stands for trustworthiness. Trustworthiness, it means your site reputable sources. For example, if your website is SSL certified, so your users can believe on that. And this can also improve your page quality. Showcase that your website is secure. Okay, so this is your trustworthiness. So these are your page quality factors. Now, the next one we have a freshness of content here. Freshness of content means that the website can take advantage of the content freshness boosted by producing relevant content that matches the real time pulse of their industry. Okay, so the every content which you decide to write on your website that must be fresh or unique. You have your own ideas. If you are using any tool for writing any content, in that case, Google will penalize you. Next, we have vertical searches. In case of vertical searches, let's suppose if your website is not ranked on Google, but you can also rank your website on Google Map. If you target your local audience, for example, if you have your restaurant and if you do 
local SEO for your restaurant, then you can target local audience. And if your local audience will will search out your website on Google Map or your product or services on Google Map, then your website is ranked here. Okay, you can also rank your website on Google Images here. You can also upload your images, do lot of image submission here, and your website is also rank on images here. Then just like you can rank your website on news, you can also rank your channel on YouTube videos. Okay, so these are some vertical. search options here now this is all about your content part in on page seo let's start with html part html is a language here which is hypertext markup language which is used in the creation of your website in your website in your html part we will take care about these some techniques here okay in your HTML. We first optimize our title, then our meta description, then our header tag, and then our image alt tag. Okay. Let us start with the title optimization. So just for doing your title optimization, we have to focus on the keyword, and this particular keyword is mentioned in the title tag at least once. And try to keep this particular keyword as close to the beginning of the title tag as possible. Okay. Next one is our header tag. We can use the focus keyword once prominently near the top of the page. So just like this is your header tag here. This is your H1 tag here. And just like your H1 tag, you also use H2, H3, H4 tag just for taking subheadings. Okay. This is just a brief about your header tag. In our coming module. we will cover a complete module about these particular topics like i will come up with a complete session on header tag next is using keywords in body tag use the focus keyword at least two or three times in your body tag including variations in the body copy of the page must include your keyword in the first passage and the last passage of your body text okay next we have image alt text when you use any particular image in your web page then you must have to add this particular alt tag alt text stands for your alternative text for example if your image is not visible on google in that case instead of your image your alt text is visible there so you have to use the focus keyword at least once in the alt attribute of a one image of a on a page this not only help with the web search but also image search which can occasionally bring valuable traffic here next we have meta description in case of meta description here you can see when you search your query on google then you can see result like this here we have one heading which is known as title here and here we have description which is known as meta description here meta description directly not impact your seo part but indirectly it impact your seo part because this particular title and this particular meta description is the first description which tells about your website here the user just know that what the information they are getting in your website when they visit there okay so that's why you must have to write a eye catchy meta description which include the every information of your website in a short and descriptive form and at least once in the meta description tag you have to include your keyword okay and not that the meta description tag does not get used by the search engine for ranking but rather it helps to attract more click by the searchers from the result page as it is the snippet of the text used by the search engines okay so after your meta description next we have after your html part next we have architecture here in case of architecture we can work on our crawl like our crawling process we can work on the speed of the website we can work on the mobile website like when we choose our website on the wordpress then first we can decide that our website must be mobile friendly because in this coming era every people want that every website they can open on their mobile device only okay and in architecture part we can also work on our urls here okay so this is just the basic of your seo next we have 
these are the things which we have to avoid when doing on page seo first of all we have thin content panda updates domain level penalty against targets sites which with a predominant amount of so so content and essentially treat it similar to our spam techniques in your website the amount of content you are using that must not be thin you have to use a proper amount of content on your site next we have a clocking clocking is in bad activity that rigging your site so that the search engine are shown a completely different version that what humans see for example if you can see on youtube let's suppose we have some title here and when we open this particular video then we can found that this is not relevant to the particular title this is completely different so this activity is known as clocking activity next we have keyword stuffing here in case of keyword stuffing you can paste a word many times in a row typically at the bottom of the page okay what happen in keyword stuffing let us suppose as you know that your website we target to rank on a particular keyword so if you can use that particular keyword again and again in your meta description in your title or in your content so this is known as keyword stuffing here okay we have to use our particular keyword in a proper density here and that is known as your keyword density here okay and that particular density is 1 or 2% it means if you are using 100 words article then you only have to use one or two time your particular keyword here okay next we have the hidden content and just like as you can see this is a white background here and if you are using any text with a white color so this can make your text blank okay so this is known as your hidden content here so we have to avoid our hidden content and the hidden text in seo okay off page seo refers to action that outside of your own website to impact your ranking within search engine result page so as we already know what is seo here that is your search engine optimization and what is the motive of doing seo in seo we just want to improve our website ranking on google search engine result page okay so just like your on page seo we have off page seo here okay your on page seo is known as your on site seo in which you can perform every activity on the website page like your title meta description everything on your page but in case of off page seo as its name shows you can do every activity off site seo okay so why your off page seo is important as we already do on page seo of our website so is it really important to do off page seo yes it is really important why because seo gives them a very good indication of how the world world means that other website and other users perceive the particular website what they are thinking about your website okay a website that is high quality what is the meaning of high quality website here see let us suppose we have a website and we have another website here okay in case of off page seo we can do activities outside the boundaries of this website in it means for example if we have this website let's suppose www.example.com okay now we have this website and we create this particular link on other website who having high quality here high quality means that the website having high domain authority what is this do domain authority means it means that this particular domain or this particular website is performing very good on google as high as your domain authority as high as the performance of your website is this particular score is score between 1 0 to 100 and this score is given by one of the seo tool which is known as moz here okay so as high as your domain authority as good as your website is so we can decide these website having a domain authority is very high for creating our link so that these website can give indication to your search engine crawler that your website is also working fine so a website that is high quality or high domain authority and useful is more likely to have references 
here the references means backlink that link of your website from where you can get traffic it is more likely to have brand mentions on social media what is this social media here your social media means your facebook likes tweets pins etc these all are your social media which help in brand awareness here okay and it is more likely to be bookmarked and shared among communities of like minded people here we can create our website backlink on those site where we can found like minded users all these signals give the green light to search engine to rank a website higher in the result so that's why our off page seo is important next we have some benefits of doing off page seo okay one of the benefit as we already know that increase in the ranking so the website will rank higher in the search engine result page and this also means that you can get more traffic here next we have page rank what is this page rank here page rank is a number between 0 and 10 which indicate the importance of a website in the eye of google okay page rank is one of the most important factor out of your 250 plus ranking factors that the google is using to rank your website why because with the help of page rank you can get greater exposure greater exposure here means that high ranking also means the greater exposure because when a website rank in the top position in that case you can get more traffic more links more visitor more social media mentions and definitely you can get more roi here okay with the help of page rank you can also improve your page quality for your page quality we have one model here that is known as eat model and that eat model stands for expertise that you are expert in any particular field and that's why you are providing that content authority that you have authority of writing this particular content trustworthiness that your site is secure and now you are able to create content on your website so which plays an important role in ranking and is directly related to off page seo and that is also the part of your off page seo here okay now as we already discussed what is off page seo here so it's a time to discuss off page seo versus your on page seo what is the difference between these so as you already see here that in case of on page seo we can work on your on page like your h1 tag your content seo con- all tags your h2 headings internal link external link comments mobile friendly speed we can work on all these factors here okay but in case of off page seo we work outside the boundaries of your website and that's why it's called as off page seo okay in case of on page seo we have to do activities you can fully control but in case of off page seo it's something out of your reach why i'm saying out of your reach say If you want to improve your title you can improve this is up to you but if you create your website link on other website okay so you are not saying that we can get 10 traffic from this website the 10 people coming on this website and click on this particular link okay we are not sure about this because you have to create many backlinks here okay and the traffic you can get from the backlinks is not visit here okay so you have to wait for a long time it's a long time activity and that is not up to your control here next we have some activities which are outside the boundaries of the web page here and what are these activities what are the things we are going to perform outside the boundaries of the web page that is your link building your social media and your brand mentions these are the three most important pillars in of page seo okay So let's start with the one of off page SEO activity that is your link building. Link building is the most popular and effective off page SEO technique. Why I'm saying this because by building link to your website you are trying to gather as many votes as possible so that you can bypass your competition and rank higher. Example If someone likes this article and references it from his or her website or blog then this is like telling search engine that this page has good information okay 
so that's why we can do link building which is a most effective of page seo technique okay we have some ways of doing link building here like blog di directories your form signature comment link article directories share your content directories like exchange schemes so these all are the different methods of doing link building we have a complete module on off page seo and in this complete module we will practically learn like what are these ways here and with the help of these ways how can we do off page seo activities next we have social media marketing in case of social media mentions social media mentions are gaining ground as ranking factor and proper configuration of social media profile can also be boost seo if you make your profile as effective as possible on social media just like your facebook twitter pin interest google plus linkedin in that case you can also get benefit next we have brand mentions in case of brand mentions google love brands and prefer to rank branded website on the top of the result okay and brands are most reliable because of good quality and likely to be trusted by users because if you are saying if you are searching any particular keyword let us suppose we have a keyword that is running shoes this is the generic keyword here and if people are searching like nike running shoes so nike is what here nike is a brand okay because people can trust on this particular brand because of their quality their experience they are happy to use that the difference between brand mentions link building and social media marketing is that brand mention do not necessarily have a link pointing to your website okay the google crawler can pick up these signals and evaluate them accordingly to create more accurate pictures of how your brand is perceived by other people so this is your brand mention here okay now Let's figure out conclusion of your off-page SEO. In off-page SEO is as important as your on-page SEO. Okay, and if you want your SEO campaigns to be run successful, then you have to work on both. You first work on your on-site SEO, then you also have to work on your off-page SEO. Okay, when thinking about link building, don't take the easy way, but try to get links from the harder to get places. How it's possible? just like those site which having higher domain authority higher page authority okay mention these links there check your links progress in your tools here okay and in our complete module i will also discuss you how to track your backlinks also okay then the more difficult is to get a link the more value it has so this is about your off page seo <laughs> In this video I'm going to cover what is technical SEO what's our need of technical SEO technical SEO monitoring and audit benefit of doing technical SEO and in the last I'm going to discuss about technical SEO checklist as well okay so let's start with the basic definition of technical SEO technical SEO is the process of ensuring that a website meets the technical requirement of modern search engine with the goal of improving organic ranking okay so as we already know what is the goal of seo here to improve your organic ranking on search engine result page okay so just to improve your ranking here we are covering technical aspect of seo here okay next we have technical seo refers to your website and server optimization for example if there is any server error in your website or if you have any crawling error in your website any indexing error in your website then with the help of technical uh, seo we can improve that and we can help search engine spider crawl and index your website more effectively to help improve organic ranking as well okay next do you really need technical seo as we already cover on page seo of page seo but why we need technical seo here because it can deal with the web crawler and making it more convenient for them to judge your content in case of technical seo we work on a tool which is known as 
गूगल सर्च कंसोल और गूगल वेब मास्टर ओके दिस इज अ टूल हेयर एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस टूल वी कैन चेक आवर वेबसाइट पेजेस दैट दे क्रॉलिंग और नॉट दे आर इंडेक्सिंग और नॉट इफ दे आर नॉट इंडेक्स दैन वी कैन ऑल्सो इंडेक्स दीज पेजेस एंड इफ देर इज एनी एरर वी कैन ऑल्सो रिजोल्व दैट एरर एंड दैट्स वाई वी कैन से दैट इट इज मोर कन्वीनियंट फॉर दैम टू जज यूर कंटेंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दीज पर्टिकुलर टूल okay so search engine robots access website based upon several factors before ranking it okay and the most crucial one is your user experience next similarly loading time are very relevant we can also improve your loading time with the help of technical seo web pages are supposed to load super fast and not bother visitors with unnecessary long loaded Website loading speed is the most important ranking ranking factor online. Next is our technical SEO monitoring and audit. Technical SEO simple aim at upgrading certain element of the web pages and making them more accessible. And what are these element? These elements are crawling. Crawling means exact useful data your web you your Google Spider is getting by extracting data from your site. Okay, after crawling, we have analyzing. We have to figure out your insights. What is your data insight? Okay, how your site is performing? Just look at the performance of your website. Look at the overview of your website. Okay, next is your optimizing. In case of optimizing, whatever be the changes required in your website, we can work on that. And next one is our monitoring. in case of monitoring we can monitor our performances our indexing our organic traffic okay so these are the thing which are done by technical seo so that's why we can say that technical seo help in monitoring and audit our website next we have some other benefits of technical seo as well addressing to google's best practices for website optimization having a mobile friendly website that users can access from any device ensuring your website load quickly for all users just by improving your website speed you can work on your loading speed making your website easy for search engine to crawl index and rank we can use technical seo here removing any pop ups and other intrusive elements that hinder your user experience making your website easy for users to navigate and find the information they need keeping your website safe and secure we also need technical seo here we can because with the help of technical seo we can also detect if there is any threat in our website if there is any manual threat action is happening on our website so we can also track that okay so these are some important benefits of seo here now let's move on the technical seo checklist like what are the activities we are covering in our technical seo part okay and all this activity we will cover in detail and in practical manner in our technical seo module here so as we divide this particular checklist in four main parts first one is this website loading speed time okay with the help of technical seo we can work on website loading speed and time in this we will work on improving server response time we work on optimizing and reduce image size without affecting the visual appearance like without affecting your image quality we are minimizing the render blocking javascript and css we limit the number of resources and http request we set a browser cache policy we reduce the number of redirects and eliminate redirect loop We avoid loading your speed with too much stuff. Okay. Next one is website functionality and usability. In your technical SEO, we also work on functionality and usability here. If I'm talking about functionality, so we must make sure that our website is mobile friendly. Okay. Build search engine friendly URL because in case of that friendly URL, you don't need to put your parameters and the number here. you have to simply structure your url in this way that it is easy in readable form for your search engine as well as for your user okay 
use a secure protocol that is https how it's happening with the help of ssl certification as you purchase down to your domain name so as the same process is happening for purchasing your ssl certificate and if your website is ssl certified then it is automatically convert from http to https okay set up correctly the 301 redirects after your site migration make sure your resources are crawlable text your test your robots.txt file to show google the right content okay in this robots.txt file we will inform our search engine spider that these are the links which are in disallow it means you don't need to crawl these link information here okay and if you are not adding any link in robots.txt file and this particular link it added in your site map or in your website so this is automatically allowed by you that you allowing search engine spider to read that particular link here verify the indexed content review your site maps to avoid being outdated in case of site map you have a txt file where you can mention all the links available on your website which you want to crawl review your blog resources like your hashbang urls with the fetches google optimize your crawl budget now what is this crawl budget here in this crawl budget it means that how many times your google spider visit on your website in the given allotted time let's suppose this is your website and your web spider visit on your website crawl every information this is one again if you are doing any changes here again your web spider visit on your website read every information this is two so now your crawl budget is two here avoid meta refresh for moving a site use redirects for flash site to the html versions use href lang for languages and relational url in case of href lang what is this href here let's suppose if your website is right now in english language and you want to make your website in german language okay in that case you are using same content as you are mentioned in english language here in that case if you are not using your href lang or any particular plugin in your website in that case google considered that these are two website and they both having same content it means there must be an issue of duplicate con content here so we can work on that with the help of technical seo make sure that your tracking is working properly with the help of technical seo we can monitor our every activity and that should be properly done next is content optimization with the help of technical seo we can also work on our content optimization as well how we can do that just to redirect replace your broken links and resources we can improve we can just remove our broken links from our pages like we can remove our web page from our website audit internal links to improve your chances to rank higher get rid of duplicate content use structured data to highlight your content keep a reasonable number of link on your on page avoid canonicalization blog page to the root of the blog what is this canonicalization means it means let us suppose you have one single product and for the single product we have two link available on my website and these two link are for only one product here so in that case this is known as canonicalization in that case you can only choose one link for this particular product here next we have user friendly website with the help of technical seo we can make user friendly website here we can set up amp in the right way just to make your website mobile friendly we can add brand crumbs what is the brand crumbs this is the navigation as you can see on some of the websites like amazon flipkart in this starting from your home page then your category page and then your product page so this is the navigation here you can see brand crumbs you can add brand crumbs in your website so that when any particular visitor visit on your product page so they can also see your category page and home page as well so test on as many platform and devices as possible okay in this video we are going to cover 
some basic factors about keywords. In this video, we are going to cover what is keywords, what are its type, why keywords, what is keyword research, why is keyword research important. So let's start with a brief definition about keyword. Keywords are the ideas and the topic that define what your content is about. The keywords on your page to be relevant to what people are searching for. So they have a better chance of finding your content along the result. So basically what the keyword is for finding any information we use search engine. Okay, search engine like Google. Google is a search engine here. In Google, in their search bar, we can write a particular word to find our information. And that particular word or a phrase is known as keyword here. Keyword are the search term that a website owner or SEO professional will use to optimize a website in the hope of ranking at the top of Google's result for specific keywords. Let's suppose if you figure out any particular keyword here. Okay. So this particular keyword which the user search, our SEO professional use that particular keyword in their website just to rank their website. So this is the main importance of keyword here. Okay. Now let's talk about some of its type. If I'm talking about keyword, so for different type of website, we are using different keywords here. Let's suppose we have some types available here. Let's start with the one that is your targeting keyword. Next, we have the keyword by length. On the basis of the length, we determine keyword here. Then we have some on-site keyword. On-site keyword or you can say your organic keyword which can give us organic result. Next, we have Google Ads keywords. Keywords which we can use in our Google Ads. Next, we have buyer's keyword. Okay. So let me explore some more about these keywords. First of all, we have a targeting keyword. Targeting stands for that which, which particular segments you are targeting. If I'm talking about your marketing segment, like here, you can target complete market. Next is your customer defining keyword in which you can define your customer requirement. Next, we have a product keyword. Let's suppose Nike running shoes. This is your product here. So if you are using your product here, especially for e-commerce website, we are using this type of keywords. Next, we have branded keywords in which you include the name of your brand. Let's suppose your Nike running shoes where you can mention the name Nike here, which is a brand here. Reebok running shoes, which is a Reebok. That is your brand name. Next, we have competitors keyword. Whatever be the keyword your competitors are using, you can target that particular keyword here. Next, we have geo-targeted geo-targeted just like you can mention your keyword like nike running shoes for women in delhi in delhi is a geocentric in delhi is a geographical here okay so that is known as targeting keyword in which you can target some particular product or brand or competitor or your geographical location next we have keyword by length we can also judge keywords on the basis of their length if you have only one or two word keyword, that keyword is known as a generic keyword or that keyword is your short tail keywords. Okay. For example, here you can see WordPress themes. This is a generic keyword. This is very basic keyword. For behind this particular keyword, you can say that your user, user intention may be just to gather information. So in that particular keyword, you have many data to showcase your client. Okay. So this is very generic keyword and that's why on that particular keyword you have a very high search volume. Okay. Next we have a mid tail keyword which is longer than your short tail keywords and shorter than your long tail keywords. And what is this mid tail keyword is in that case where you can use any suffix or prefix after your generic keyword. Let us suppose here you can take example that is WordPress themes for blog. Okay. So WordPress theme is your generic keyword. If you are adding four blog here, this is your mid tail keyword here. Okay. So in case of mid tail keyword, we also have a volume which is less than your generic keyword, but more than your long tail keyword. Next, we have a long tail keyword. 
which is very specific keywords because in case of long tail keyword your client your customers basically define their requirement just like you can see here free responsive wordpress themes for blog here customer define complete query about complete information about their query so they these are having search volume which is very less but having high conversion rate because as we can say that what is the best deal on nike running shoes it means that the customer is ready to purchase that particular item but they are exploring some more about that so this type of keyword we have to use in our website these are very specific but having high conversion rate and these type of keywords also having low competition just because of long keyword next we have on site keyword in case of on site keyword here you can also say organic keyword if you want to rank your website organically on google search engine result page then you have to figure out these type of keywords here here we have two type of keyword which we are using in our website first one we have a primary keyword primary keyword or you can say your main keyword main term that you target on your web page okay so this is your primary keyword here which you include in your title in your meta description in your images so this is the main keyword here you have to figure out after your main keyword you also have to figure out your related keywords related to your primary keyword okay for example if your primary keyword is women's running shoes okay then your related keywords could be women running shoes reviews women running shoes sales and the best women's running shoes these all are your related keywords so when you start writing article on the basis of these keyword then in that case you can mention your primary keyword in your title in your meta description in your image alt in your internal linking and you can mention your lsi keywords or you can say your related or latent semantic keywords in the body okay in the description part so these are your on site keywords here after on site we have a google ads keywords which we can use when we create google ads for doing paid advertisement or for creating paid result we are using these type of keyword here here we have four type of keywords first is your broad match keyword next is your phrase match then your exact match and last one is your negative keywords in case of broad match keywords what we have example shoes shoes for sale broad match means that in any phrase if you found this particular keyword then your advertisement is visible in front of these users okay in case of phrase match it means that if your targeted audience can type this particular keyword like your primary keyword whatever be the keyword you are choosing and any suffix and the prefix after your keyword like your women shoes sales women shoes stores stores for women shoes for this type of keyword this is known as your phrase match keyword it means if your audience is adding any suffix and prefix after their main keyword in that case your ad is showcased there next we have exact match here you can target your keyword in this way that if your audience can type the exact keyword only then your ad is visible there just example if your exact word is women and shoes here you can say like plus women plus shoes by this way you can write your keyword it means that in your particular keyword you have two word here one is your women next one is shoes so that is your women shoes shoes women and shoes for women so for these result only your ads will display here next we have negative keywords negative keywords means the keywords which you don't want that your ads will showcase example men's shoes okay here you just negatively set these keyword for example if someone searches for these result then your ad will not display there for men's shoes shoes for guys men's shoes say for these keyword your ad will not display on these keywords next we have buyers keyword in case of buyers here we can detect our buyers intention behind the keyword for example first is informational keyword 
if your targeted audience want to get some information about that particular keyword example what's the best running shoes here we can see that our search intent is informational here our user just want to know some information about their query like what's the best running shoes next we have navigational keyword in case of navigational they just want to explore more option in their purchasing journey in that case here you can see example here that is nike running shoes it means our buyer want to purchase particular item but they are confusing and they are exploring more information next we have transactional keywords in which your user intent is transactional they just want to purchase particular item they are searching they are deciding that they have to purchase running shoes from nike but now your user is exploring more options there that is best deal on nike running shoes okay so this type of keyword which can provide us the search intent of the user this these type of keyword known as buyers keyword okay so these are some type of keywords here now after uh, doing discussion about types of keyword now we have why are keywords important okay or you can say what's the importance of keyword here so keyword are important because they can be targeted with the marketing okay when your website is listed at the top of the result for a search that keyword act as a free source of website traffic for you and if you have an advertising budget and you can place pay per click ads on specific keyword that is how google ads operate advertisers bid for the space at the top of a result page for the specific keyword okay for example the keyword loan has four advertisements at the top of the result while the example above what plants grow in the desert has no ads okay so this is the importance of keywords here next we have why we choose keyword what happen if we are not choosing keyword for an online business keywords are your strategy okay they are the battle you choose to fight in the hope of outdoing your competitors and directing the people using search engine in your market to your site instead of theirs when you look at the keyword that a site has ranking for you can see the website strength and the area where they excel over their competitor when we look at all the keywords position we are able to understand what's their website is okay and what product they are marketing online next we have qualities of keyword if i'm searching any particular keyword so these are the things which we have to target in my mind just to improve the quality of keywords here okay first of all we have a search volume if you are searching for any keyword then you must make sure that this particular keyword must have some search volume here okay next we have competition for competition you don't have to choose that particular keyword which have large competition and you also don't have to choose that keyword which have low competition but having zero search volume so in that case you have to choose that competition which have some search volume as well and also having low and medium competition okay next we have price that is cost per click you have to decide your ads budget and on the basis of budget you have to decide that keyword which satisfy your search volume and competition condition as well as your budget also okay next we have intent when you are exploring your keyword in that case you also have to target in your mind about the intent of the users like what's their intent they want to gather some information they have informational content they want to doing transactional they have some transactional content or they have commercial content so you have to figure out the content of the user behind any particular keyword here okay so next we have competitiveness of a keyword in case of competitiveness how can we detect our competition just to detect your competition means that now you are searching that what are the efforts you have to put on just to rank your website according to that particular keyword so now we have two factors here on the basis of which we can decide that this particular keyword we have to choose or not 
फर्स्ट वन वी हैव इज आवर की वर्ड डिफिकल्टी ओके बाई यूजिंग की वर्ड रिसर्च टूल हेयर वी कैन डिटेक्ट की वर्ड रिसर्च की वर्ड डिफिकल्टी ऑफ एनी पर्टिकुलर की वर्ड सो दिस मैट्रिक टेल यू हाउ कॉम्पिटिटिव इट इज टू रैंक ऑर्गेनिकली एट द टॉप ऑफ द रिजल्ट पेज इफ यूर की वर्ड डिफिकल्टी इज हाई इन दैट केस इट इज मोर डिफिकल्ट टू रैंक यूर वेबसाइट इफ यूर की वर्ड डिफिकल्टी इज लो लेट सपोज इट इज थर्टी परसेंट इट इज फिफ्टी परसेंट इन दैट केस यू कैन choose that particular keyword in that kit it is more easy as comparison to high difficulty keywords to rank your web website organically so this is based on how strong and reputable the website are that are already on the first page okay next we have competitive density so this matrix is tell you how competitive it is to rank in advertisement at the top of the result competitive density is used for your paid searches for your advertisement part keyword difficulty is for your organic keyword okay for your on site keyword this is for your ads keyword okay so this is based on how expensive the bid are and how strong the current advertisers are okay so on the basis of that we can decide competitiveness of a keyword here so next we have is the keyword research what is keyword research keyword research is a process by which you research popular search term people type into search engine your search engine like google okay and include them strategically in your content so that your content appears higher on the search engine result page so this particular activity is known as keyword research here now why it is important why we are doing keyword research here so the answer is it allows you to see the volume and the competition data for the keywords you are thinking you want to use and also spot any changes you need to make your chosen keyword going forward because as we all know that keyword is the backbone here so just like research is also the backbone of your keyword clustering so that's why we can see that our keyword research is important here so this is just the basic about keyword research in our upcoming module i have a lot to tell about keyword research here so thank you so much for watching this video in this video we will cover what is content marketing why is content marketing important what is the life cycle of your content marketing what is your content marketing funnel about checklist tools and resources so let's start with a brief definition on content marketing first of all the question we have is what is content marketing so content marketing is the technique of creation and distributing valuable and relevant content to attract acquire and engage a clearly defined targeted audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action okay so what is content marketing here in content marketing we can create and distribute that valuable content and what is the aim we have for doing content marketing now we want to attract acquire and engage our targeted audience just to drive profitable customer action okay so basically this is the content marketing now why content marketing is important why we are doing content marketing content marketing generates more than 3 times as many lead as traditional advertising method how we can say that because traditionally we are not bothering about content marketing but in today's world here content is the king content is the only thing which our targeted audience focus if your content is eye catchy then definitely you can attract your audiences with the help of your content marketing now in content marketing we have some benefits here okay these are the some benefits of doing content marketing first of all brand awareness with the help of content marketing we can do brand awareness we can create content as much as effective with the help of email marketing we can design as attractive images as we can do we can design as attractive templates in this template we can create content that attract our customers competitive advantage if your content is 
having good quality better than your competitor then definitely you will get good quality good competitive advantage next we have media visibility with the help of content marketing you can improve your media visibility with the help of content marketing it helps us to generate lead and conversion because if we have a very attractive content on our site then this will attract our targeted audience and if our targeted audience attract with our content then definitely it will help us in lead generation and doing conversions here next we have client engagement so with the help of content marketing we can get more client engagement here we can get more website traffic with the help of content marketing okay so these are some benefits here now we have a life cycle of content marketing if you are planning for doing content marketing in that case you have to plan your structure in this way first we have planning in case of planning we have to understand how to make your content more unique what are the ways to make it unique for example if you have a simple four line paragraph okay now if you want to make it attractive then you can let take an example so you can take help of the images here you can take help of the banner here just to describe your image okay so your first is planning in planning we have to understand how to make your content more unique next we have produce in case of produce optimizing content as you create in that as first you have to create your content you have to make it unique and after creation of your content now you have to do optimization of your content okay after doing optimization now we have to do promote okay now we have to do promotion knowing when how and where to publish content you can promote your content you can take help of your social media marketing you can take help of your off page backlinks you can take help of the link building activities for promoting your backlinks here you can take help of the google advertisements as well just to promote your content okay after doing promotion now when the traffic is coming to your website with the help of content marketing here you have to analyze your result here you have to understand your result like what you have to improve what are the things you have to work on okay so you have to analyze those things here after analyzing now our final step is amplify in case of amplify we have to understand what content to amplify to optimize your roi like what content is most effective for you what content gives you more result more website traffic okay so you have to amplify to optimize your high roi so this is the life cycle of content marketing now let's discuss content marketing funnel just like your marketing funnel we also have our content marketing funnel in this funnel we will learn like for which type of goal you have to plan for which type of content if i'm saying content writing so content writing doesn't mean that you have to simply write your article or a letter in simple text form in your content we have a different type of contents here content as in the form of ebook blogs podcast advertisement images videos okay these all are the forms of content here like case studies emails these all are form of content here now with the help of content marketing funnel here we get an idea like for which type of goal you have to decide which type of content okay so in our marketing funnel our first stage is awareness stage in awareness stage our goal is how do you create brand awareness okay for creation of brand awareness here we can use the content that can be your blog you can write a blog to attract your audiences you can take help of your social media content you can take help of podcast so these three types are these three content types are essential for brand awareness next stage we have is interest in interest we have to know how do you plan to acquire potential clients here we just want to attract our client in our website for this we can create content like ebooks display ad so this is the content which is helpful to gather interest of your potential clients 
Next stage we have is the consideration stage. In this stage, we have to define how role do you play to get users consider you. Like what type of content content you are creating so that people consider you. Here we can create case studies. We can sending sales email just to make your users consider you. Next stage we have is the revenue stage. In your revenue stage, you have to know how users are engaged on their interest and consideration. In this, you have to take decision buy now this call to action button you have to use in case of revenue here. Okay. Next stage we have is the retention stage. In case of retention stage, you have to know how does marketing do you support retention. Okay. In that case, we can take help of the helpful articles here, product tutorials here that will help us a lot in your retention stage. So this is your content marketing funnel here. Okay. So after doing discussion about some content marketing life cycle funnel, now we have a checklist here. Like if we if you want to create your good content marketing, if you want to create a good content for your website then you have to take care of this following checklist here okay so our first checklist is document your goal first of all you have to document what is your goal what is your business goal what is your marketing goal okay then you have to identify your ideal customer and develop buyers persona you can create buyers persona with the help of one of the tool that is hubspot Okay, you can take help of the HubSpot. You can create your buyer's persona there and you have to select your ideal customer. Then you have to decide what conversation and topics you want to own. Like what are the topics you want to choose? You have to develop an editorial calendar and map content throughout the funnel. Next, we have produce. In case of produce, you have to produce a big rock and then Chisel it into small people. What is all that? If I'm saying big rock, big rock means your big topic ideas. Your big topic idea. Let's say if I'm saying digital marketing. So digital marketing is a big rock. And if I'm saying SEO, SEM, content writing, email writing, what are these? These are the small people of this big rock. So this is known as your big rock and people theory. Okay, so you have to produce this big rock and then result it into small people. Next, we have publish to the LinkedIn company and showcase pages. Okay, next you have don't forget visual content. If I'm saying visual content, visual content means you have to use images and video content in your website because just to make your website attractive. This is very important part. If you can use your visual content, visual content can attract more and more customer and give you better result. Next, you have to amplify your reach with LinkedIn sponsored content, influencers program and increasing employees to share. In case of amplify your search with the LinkedIn, you have to work with the LinkedIn sponsors content, content here. Okay, you can do that or you can also skip this step. Measure your result and tweak your content for maximum impact. Now, after writing your article, you must have to do proofreading of your content. Like, is there any grammatical error or not? Or is there any punctuation error or not? You have to take care of it. And at the end, you have to measure the result. Like, what are the traffic you are getting on this particular content? What is the performance of this particular content? What's the user behavior for this particular content? Okay, you have to take care of these activities. Okay, now I'm just going to discuss about some tools and the resources which are used in content marketing. So these tools and resources are for your research tool, you have to take help of Ubersuggest for your keyword research. For Buzzsumo, this is one of the tools you can take care with your research part. Next, we have Canva. We can use Canva for doing editing for creating your images banners in that case you can use canva picmonkey quick repick we also have one of the tools that is post my wall you can use that for video maker you can use video 
you can use animoto v video you can use these two okay for your creating infographics you have to use pictochart easel.ly visual.ly for your slide content you can use canva hackodex prezi so these are some of the tool you can use to create your content create your image part create your video part or any kind of infographic uh, content you want to create for your site you can take it with the help of these two okay so let's start with the one of the topic that is what is dwell time so dwell time is the length of time a person spend looking at a web page after they have clicked a link on a search engine result page but before clicking back to search engine page result see what happen here let's suppose this is your google search engine result page when user enter any keyword now user is able to see your website let's suppose this is your website here okay when user click on this particular link then they visit to your website this is your website here okay and in that case when user click on this particular link so they can leave one interaction here okay after one interaction they simply visit on your site do nothing nothing interaction is happening here in that case after spending 5 second here they simply go back to your search engine result page okay so what is this 5 second here this 5 second is known as dwell time this is called as dwell time here that is the length of time people spend looking at the web page they have clicked on the link on a search engine result page but just before getting back that is the time known as dwell time here okay next we have what is bounce rate so bounce rate is calculated when someone visit a single page on your website and does nothing on the page before leaving what happen here same case with the dwell time this is your search engine result page here this is your website link when user click this website link they can visit on your website they can leave one interaction there when they visit on your website they can do nothing and they can simply leave your website so this is known as bounce rate this is known as bounce rate here okay now what is the difference between this dwell time and this bounce rate here you can not see that in case of dwell time we have a time that users spend in website in case of bounce rate we don't have any time which users spend here so what is the impact of time here see if users spend 5 second on your website it means that user is not interested in your website so that's why they immediately leave your website but what happen if user spend 5 minute on your website okay we have two type of user let us suppose user 1 spend 5 second in your website and user 2 spend 5 minute in your website in terms of your bounce rate these both user are null lead these both lead are null lead for us why because in both the cases user simply visit to your website and they immediately leave your website okay but for your dwell time this is your positive lead when user spend 5 minute on your website because if user spending 5 minute it means that user is interested in your information what whatever be the information you are added in your website so this 5 mean minute means a lot in case of dwell time it means this is our positive lead and user is interested in our content okay so this is the difference between your dwell time and bounce rate now how to increase your dwell time how we can increase our dwell time here for increasing your dwell time you have to produce longer and better content you have to work with your content you have to give prioritize user experience you have to give priority that your user experience must be strong okay in that case you have to format content with headings subheadings and bullet points list and short paragraphs to make it scannable you have to keep load time below your 5 second just to improve the quality of your website then test your 
site across browsers like safari firefox chrome and opera okay so these are the steps we have to take care just to increase our dwell time if we can make our content as effective as possible if we can make our content formatting in this way like we have some heading then we have some heading then we have some bullet points list so it is very easy for the users to read that information that is also in the attractive form for the users so this make a good user experience here okay next every web page should also have a mobile friendly version mobile friendly website is most important as we also have one google algorithm here in which we have a mobile mobi mobile first index which means that your website must be mobile friendly website okay you have to use your strategic internal linking with the help of internal linking you can increase your users interaction okay with the help of internal linking user can also visit to the other pages of your website as well engage with the comment section on your post on your post if you have comment section you have to give reply of the every comment if your comment is positive or negative you have to give reply for all that so that you have to know about your users in behavior on your particular post what your users want to say what your users observe for your post you have to take care about these stuff next why dwell time matter in seo see page visitors exit your website for several reason and there may be we have to take care of these uh, particular reasons why your user exit your website why they leave your website page they leave your website because might be the reason that your site is spammy that your content is misleading whatever be the content you are added in your site that has lot of grammatical error might be your page must have some slow loading speed that can be the reason your website is not mobile mobile friendly that can be the reason too many pop-ups window available on your website that is also the reason here okay so these are the some reason that page visitors exit your website okay and beca because of this you have high bounce rate here for your content oriented website higher dwell time means that your page content captures the online users search intent what is their search intent behind this this is a valuable insight Optimized content is one of the most important ranking signal that search engine consider. It helps generate quality backlinks, build through leadership brands, and improve your search ranking. Okay, so for making your website content oriented and just to increase your dwell time higher, you have to take care about these activities. Okay. so this is the basic about dwell time what is your dwell time what is it important how it is different from your bounce rate so thank you so much for watching this video